Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sew a log cabin quilt block. This traditional quilt block has been a classic for a long time and it's actually very easy to create. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is to pick your fabric. I'm using 100% cotton quilters cotton fabric which comes in 44 inches in width. And I have five different types of fabric here, which is what I recommend that you start with as well. Now we have a download available on our site. So for now, we're just gonna be looking at this and you'll notice I have five numbers. So for each of these fabric, I'm going to designate them a number. So maybe this middle one is going to be number one. This is going to be number two. For now, we're just gonna ignore the letters because that's for when we're sewing it together. To give you an idea of a finished quilt square, Here's one. And so this is an example of what it's going to look like. So after you have your fabric, we're next gonna look at our chart, figure out how much fabric you're gonna need for each number, and then also how many strips we're gonna cut out because basically our log cabin block is made up of strips. This chart that's on our printout is for helping us figure out how much fabric we're going to get. You can see that I taped my fabric here to the side for each number. That way it can help me keep, keep it organized. And this number corresponds to the numbers up here. So number one, the square is number one, and this fabric right here. So this is telling me I'm going to need a half yard for all my squares. And these measurements are for a full size quilt. We need to get 42 of these 15 inch blocks. So half yard should get me enough for 42 blocks. Once I have my fabric, I need to cut four strips from that fabric. Now all our strips are going to be the same size. So it doesn't matter what fabric it is, they're all gonna be strips. And because I'm using 44 inch width fabric, all my strips are gonna be 44 inches in width by three and a half inches. Now this is including my quarter inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. This fabric is number two. You'll see we have 2A and 2B. These letters we're just gonna ignore because two and two is the same fabric. It's still gonna be this fabric. So I'm gonna need one and a quarter yards and that's gonna take care of both of these. So it's not like I need one and a quarter for this and one and a quarter for this one. It's one and a quarter for both of these. So you're gonna just gonna go down with each of your designated fabric. It's gonna tell you how much fabric to get and then how many strips you need to cut out. I like to cut out all my strips using a rotary cutter, mat, and ruler. It just makes it go by a lot faster. So this is actually, my fabric's folded twice. You can see my salvages here. So it was folded half naturally when I got at the fabric store and then I just folded it half again. So my 44 inches is going this way. So I'm gonna measure over three and a half inches and I'm doing this for all my fabric depending on how many strips each one needs. And then I'm gonna use my cutter and just cut along. Here's an example of one of my strips. It's still folded in half, and you should have a lot of these out of all your fabrics now. The next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take all your strips for your number one fabric, which is this fabric right here, and I'm gonna cut it down even further because what I wanna get is a bunch of these three and a half by three and a half inch squares. So we need 42 of these since we need 42 blocks. So obviously I'm going to grab my ruler and cutter again. And you can go ahead and cut off this part here. And you can keep your fabric folded in half because after I cut off this end here, I can measure over three and a half inches, cut it, measure over three and a half inches, cut it. So every time I cut it, I end up getting two of these and it just makes it go along a lot faster. So I'm gonna do that for all four of my strips for the number one fabric, but I'm also gonna do it for some of my number two strips as well because you'll see here's the number one out of this one, which I need these. And then we have 2A, which is also squared. For two, I need 11 strips, but out of those 11 strips, four of those strips, I'm going to cut down to get these squares. So here's my number two fabric, and I already cut some squares out of it. So again, you're only doing it for four of the strips from the number two fabric. For all our other strips, you're going to leave them in their original strip length. Once the cutting is taken care of, we can then move on to the fun part, which is our assembly of the blocks. 
Now for a block assembly, I like to treat it like an assembly line. So I'm creating all my blocks at the same time, doing all the same steps at once. That way I'm not just creating one block and then moving on to another block. I just think it goes along a lot faster. So I'm gonna grab number one and then number two fabric, which are the squares. So this is gonna be 2A and this is just gonna be one. Now if you have directional fabric, make sure that you're always putting your fabric in the same orientation. That way it's gonna look kind of consistent once all the blocks are sewn together. So I'm gonna start pairing these two off. So I'm gonna grab one of A and two A, and I'm going to place them so they're right sides together. And I'm just gonna kind of figure out, okay, I'm gonna sew them all, my quarter inch seam allowance on this side. If you wanna pin them, you can. I just kind of lay them on top of each other since they're kind of on the small side and then just hold them with my hands. So then I'm gonna grab another one place them together, right side to right side. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm just stacking them because then I'm gonna take them to my machine. I have them all together and then I can just take one pair, sew my quarter inch seam allowance, then take another pair, sew a quarter inch seam allowance. So I just think it makes it go a lot easier. But if you have another system, you can do whatever is easy for you. I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing my first square. And I always do a back stitching on both the beginning and end. I know some people don't, but I just like that extra security that I know it's not gonna come apart. So instead of doing the end here, let me do a back stitch real fast, and then cutting my threads, I'm just gonna sew a couple of stitches past my square, grab another set, lift it, and then go ahead and start again. So I'm not wasting time cutting my threads in between. I'm gonna go ahead and do that after I finish sewing all my squares. So again, it's like a little assembly line here. I can then cut all the individual threads in between each block. You can see them here. So I'm gonna do that with my scissors and you end up with a block on its own. And the next step, of course, is pressing all these blocks that we have. So some people prefer to keep the seam allowance closed and pressed to one side. I actually prefer to have it pressed open. I think it looks nicer, but it's whatever your preference is. Now that these two pieces are stitched together, we've completed this section, one and two A, and now we're gonna move on to two B. So that's the strip. We're still using the fabric that's number two. And you can see that I have it laid out in a similar manner to what is shown on the chart. That way I can make sure that everything's going to be consistent. Again, we're keeping this in a strip because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my individual sections and I'm going to pin them onto my strip so that way I can sew a continuous quarter inch seam allowance without having to keep feeding the machine new pieces. So I'll show you what that looks like. So now that this is laid out, I know which side needs to be pinned together. So this raw edge needs to line up with this raw edge. And I'm not putting this completely on the end. We can leave about a quarter of an inch of this bottom fabric hanging over because we can eventually just go ahead and cut that off, making sure the raw edges line up. If you wanna go ahead and put in a couple of pins, you can. All right, so that's one section. And then I'm gonna grab another one. Lay it down. Again, they're always right sides together. And you can see I'm putting it in the same direction as this one over here. So I'm not taking this one and flipping it this way. I always do it the same. That way when it's opened, or pressed open, that it's gonna look the same. Matching up the raw edges. This edge shouldn't be butted right up next to my previous section. I would leave at least a quarter of an inch between it. Again, we're going to be cutting in between them. So it's all right, just make sure you don't leave a huge gap, otherwise you'll be wasting fabric and you won't have enough strips. So then I'm gonna pin this, grab another one, and then do the same thing. So I'm just gonna fill up all my strips with all these little pieces and then sew a continuous quarter inch seam allowance. Continuing on with my seam allowance, I'm gonna be sewing all my strips for the rest of my blocks in the same way. So I'm just doing my quarter inch seam allowance, doing one continuous stitch, and I'm being careful when I go over these seam allowances because I wanna make sure that they stay open. And I also like to do my back stitching on the beginning and end of each section as well. 
So I'm just coming up to the end of one section. So once I get to the end, I do a couple of back stitches and then I just continue moving forward. And do a couple more back stitches on the beginning of this one. And then do the same for all my strips. Once you have your section sewn onto your 2B block, you're then going to press the seam open. You're gonna take the seam all along the whole strip and then press it open like this. And I've already done that with my other strip. So here's one. And then I'm going to grab my rotary cutter, my mat and my ruler, and I'm going to trim off the parts of the strip that aren't perfectly flush with my sections. So I'm going to cut here and then I'm going to do the same thing for each section and you'll end up with something like this. Now it's time for us to move to 3A. We've completed this section now. So now we get to use a new fabric, fabric number three. Same sort of thing. I'm laying out my pieces in the exact same fashion that you see here. So we have this same layout and then I have 3A going along the side here. Same thing. I'm going to take each section, pin it to my strip, grab the next one, make sure that I'm putting it in the exact same layout. Then make sure you do have somewhat of a gap in between and so on. So then I'm going to sew that. I have one done already and it's even already pressed open. And then you're going to go ahead and cut the individual section. So I'm lining up my ruler with this section right here to make sure I do a straight line. And you'll end up with a piece that looks like this. 3B is the next section. So I have that strip down here. I'm gonna take our pieces, put them right side to right side, and line up the raw edge, pin and sew, and then press your seams open. And I already have my example done. So you can see, we're starting to get the hang of it now. Then you're gonna separate them with the rotary cutter and you're going to end up with a block like this. At this point, you're just going to continue sewing on the different strips. And at this point, you should be an expert because you're just gonna be doing the same thing. So the next one is going to be 4A and we're gonna be switching to our fabric number four. So that's with this one. Then we have 4B. So it's fabric four at the top. There we go. 5A is next. We're switching fabrics again to do our last fabric, number five. And then last but not least, 5B, and that's gonna round out your block. And there you go. So that's what a completed block looks like. Once you have 42 blocks completed, you can start laying them out in order to create your quilt top. Now I like to start laying them out before I start sewing them together. That way you can kind of see what kind of a look you wanna have. You're gonna be going six blocks across horizontally and then seven blocks down vertically when you're doing your quilt top in order to create the full size. Now the nice thing about log cabin blocks is that depending on how you lay them out, you can get different looks. So this is one way. And then if we just switch it up just a little bit, we can get an entirely new look. And I'm just working with four blocks because they're kind of big, so it's pretty much all we can show. There's another way that we can do it so it'd look better if it's straight. And then another way, let's flip this way. Flip this around. So it's really up to you to just experiment and see what you like. Once you have it the way you want it, the next thing is I would start creating rows with six blocks in them, and then we're gonna start sewing those rows together. When you finish your quilt top, you can move on to creating a quilt sandwich. If you need help in completing your quilt, we'll post a link below to our block quilt tutorial. If you make one, please send us a picture so we can see how yours turned out. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials. 
including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.